When I first published my first video, Mixing Paint and Filling a Spray Gun, I used some old paint that was on the shelf and thinned it by eye. In this video, I will take the thinning process a bit further by showing how waterborne paint reacts to thinning. I had a new cabinet to spray inside, so I purchased Glidden High Endurance Acrylic Waterborne Paint. Like in my previous video, I'll be using a gravity feed gun with a 2mm needle, fluid nozzle, and air cap configuration. Viscosity is simply the thickness of the material. High viscosity is thick, low viscosity is thin. It's like the old saying, thick as molasses or thin as water. I'm going to measure the viscosity of the paint using what is called a number 4 Ford cup. This is the one I'm most familiar with from my previous life of spraying cars for a living. The viscosity is simply measured by filling the cup with paint and timing how long it takes the cup to empty. I attempted to find a recommended viscosity for gravity feed guns and it seems to be information the manufacturers are stingy with or just don't think anyone like me would actually care about. Well, I came up with a number of around 20 to 30 seconds in a number 4 Ford cup it is best to atomize paint and I'll show you just what that looks like. It's a general rule that paint dries properly at 56% relative humidity and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, good luck waiting for that day. So, temperature matters. Make sure your paint is at least at room temperature. And, waterborne paint dries best when there is a lot of air movement. Don't be afraid to set up some fans to blow across your sprayed surfaces. Extenders are not thinners. What they do is slow down the evaporation of solvents to allow the paint to flow to a smooth finish. On a hot, humid day, it will certainly aid in eliminating orange peel and blushing in your final coat. Caution! Be very careful when spraying vertical surfaces. Extenders will greatly increase your possibility of getting runs in the paint. To use the Ford Cup, you need a stopwatch or a watch with a second hand. The stopwatch is best. To take a measurement, fill the cup with the liquid and start the watch as soon as it is lifted out. As soon as the paint starts to drip from the cup, stop the watch. It takes water just 6.5 seconds. As I am about to demonstrate, paint straight out of the can is an entirely different thing. I measured the paint two times just to make sure I had a good measurement. The paint was so thick, like molasses, it was hard to tell when the cup had emptied. It took 6 minutes 5 seconds. Since I now own the Ford Cup, I'll probably measure other brands of paint as I buy them just to see which manufacturers put the most material in the can. Note that I have a small pail of water set aside to immediately clean the cup. Water could change the chemistry of the paint. In my research, I didn't find anywhere where someone said water does change the chemistry, but I'm still dubious about adding too much. When spraying furniture, it may be best to use acrylic enamel, which can be substantially reduced without harming the material's properties. A word of caution, acrylic enamel is solvent-based and should not be sprayed in a confined area where a spark could ignite it. Adding just 10% water could have the same effect as adding 25% thinner to a can of lacquer. I measured 500 milliliter into a beaker and added 50 milliliter of water. Yes, I'm using metric measurement simply because it's easier to use. After thoroughly stirring, I took the measurement two times and came up with a viscosity of 2 minutes 9 seconds. Note that just 10% water made the paint 55% more viscose. This mixture did not go through my gun very well. So I went back to the bench and with a fresh on-cut 500 milliliters of paint added 25% or 125 milliliter of water. Actually, I made a mistake and went a little bit over. My measurement is now 40 seconds and it does spray. Yes, it is a far cry from the 6.5 seconds we measured for the water. In conclusion, if you are spraying a vertical surface, make sure you spray a tack coat first and allow it to dry before applying your first full wet coat. 
At 40 seconds, I had to narrow the fan just a bit, and remember, I am using a gun with a 2mm needle, fluid, and air cap combination. You may have noticed that I hung not only a regulator, but also a moisture filter on the end of my air hose. In my opinion, it makes the gun way too heavy. I'll address the issue in another video. There are currently four guns listed on my Amazon store with 2mm tips that cost less than $50. So go check it out at BudmanProductions.com. And if you care to do some of your own experimenting, I've added a number four Ford cup. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please post them and I'll certainly respond to you. You make it a great day and thanks for watching.